I now want to introduce Ambassador Daniel Kurtzer. We're so lucky to have him here tonight. He's the Middle East, the chief Middle East policy advisor to Senator Obama's presidential campaign. He is, uh, was the U.S. Ambassador to Israel from 2001 to 2005, and also a former U.S. Ambassador to Egypt for several years. And he served under both Republican and Democratic presidents, I think that's very important, under Clinton, under George W. Bush, and I think perhaps others. In addition, he was a lead intelligence officer in the State Department, and he received his PhD from Columbia University. And I'm sure one of the things he would consider important, because it's interesting, he was recently appointed commissioner of the Israel Baseball League. So I present <laughs> Commissioner Kersen. Good evening. Uh, the uh, real credential I bring to this evening is that I was born and raised in Elizabeth in Union County. And I live down the road in Princeton, so uh, meeting with uh, my fellow New Jerseyans is very important, particularly on a subject that we're here for tonight. I want to talk about national security matters. You've heard a great deal already this evening about the economic, social, ethical, religious, and other issues that should really prompt us to think very seriously about this election and how important it is. But I also uh, want to bring to you a perspective uh, on which I spent 29 years of my life uh, serving our country in the United States Foreign Service, as you heard, serving Republican and Democratic presidents, and being professionally nonpartisan for 29 years. I never even told our children how I voted because it was important that I be able to say that I was trying to develop and carry out the national security policy of our country without reference to the politics. This election, however, has brought me out. And it has brought me out because the presidency of George W. Bush, the last eight years, have compromised our national security in a way that I did not ever think possible. Now, I'm gonna talk about that, but I also wanna tell you that Saying that George W. Bush's presidency has been bad for the United States doesn't necessarily tell you what John McCain will do, except for the fact that he has told us that he supports what George W. Bush has done. So let me focus on three issues that I think are quite important. They're issues on which I spent much of my professional career, and they're issues which are important to all of us as Americans, and for those of us in this audience who are Jewish, particularly important because of the impact they have on Israel and Israel security. And that relates to the issues of Iran, Iraq, and the Middle East peace process. Now, we've had an administration which for eight years has pursued policies that have resulted in tremendous dangers to us. Iran is perhaps within a year or two or three of being able to enrich enough uranium to produce independently the capability to have a nuclear weapon. For those who think that there is an inevitability to the acquisition by countries of nuclear weapons, I would bring your attention to a statement made in the early 1960s by the late John F. Kennedy, who when asked about the question of nuclear proliferation, suggested that perhaps proliferation was an inevitable consequence of the spread of technology. President Kennedy projected there would be 20 to 25 nuclear powers by the end of the century. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there weren't. And there weren't 25 nuclear powers because the United States conducted diplomacy. We engaged with our allies. We engaged with international organizations. We worked closely and shared intelligence with the International Atomic Energy Agency. And we fought on the battlefield of public opinion, of ideas, and of diplomacy, and prevented country after country from acquiring nuclear weapons. For eight years, we have watched Iran prepare a nuclear program and have done not one day of diplomacy with the Iranians on the question of their nuclear program. Now, I am not naive about diplomacy. In fact, I was called by colleagues in the State Department a tough diplomat, because I believe that diplomacy is one of the assets of our national power. It's not merely the talking to one's friends or the shaking hands with kings and potentates and others. Diplomacy is an asset of our national power. And it's a way to try to resolve problems or at least 
break them into manageable chunks between the time in which you talk about them and the time in which you may level sanctions and the time in which you may have to choose to use force. And this administration has not used diplomacy. We have not engaged the Iranians on any of these critical issues. We have not been able to engage even our allies in an effort to try to persuade, cajole, or pressure the Iranians in any of these areas. So on this critical issue of national security for us, let alone how critical it is for the state of Israel to think about an Iranian nuclear weapon with Iranians having the capability of delivering nuclear weapons to Israel, and for us to be sitting around waiting for that day when our intelligence community would tell us that the Iranians have turned the corner on their independent capacity to enrich uranium, and not to be able to tell us as American citizens that our president has done everything possible to stop it, I don't buy it. Barack Obama has talked about tough diplomacy. I was privileged to join him on his trip to Israel this summer when he described to his Israeli interlocutors, the Prime Minister, Foreign Minister, Defense Minister of Israel, and others, just how he would deal with the Iranian threat. And he left behind an Israeli leadership persuaded that this was a man in whom they could repose their trust. Because they didn't see him as weak, they saw him as determined. They understood that his priority was to protect the United States, and for Israel that is their priority as well. Because the better we protect ourselves from Iran's nuclear possibilities, the better we can protect Israel as well. Now you know that Senator Obama, before he was a member of the Senate, opposed the war. You know that until today, Senator McCain thinks that we can win this war. Well, let me do a little professorial work with you tonight. I actually teach these days. I was on the Iraq study group, on the expert subcommittees of the, uh, the Baker and uh, Hamilton uh, group that met and presented a bipartisan report to President Bush on alternative strategies for Iraq. We examined ways in which to win this war. We had 25 experts, we had 10 notable bipartisan personalities, and we came out with the conclusion that this was not a winnable war. It's not a war that we necessarily have to lose either. It is a war that ideology and personal hubris got us into. It is a war that had no business being waged five years after it started. And it's also a war that can be brought to an end in an honorable fashion in which countries in the Middle East must take responsibility for what happens in that neighborhood more than we have that responsibility. And you have two visions of how to do this. You have Barack Obama who talks about a careful uh, 16 to 18 month withdrawal leaving behind enough residual capabilities to deal with terrorism, working with allies to ensure that they have the capability to work with us and with the Iraqi government to prevent the resurgence of Al-Qaeda or others. We have countries that have taken no responsibility until now neighboring Iraq because they've gotten a free ride off of our budget and off of our bodies. And Senator Obama has a plan. You could have watched that Republican National Convention for four days last week and never heard a word about foreign policy. You heard a lot of criticisms of Senator Obama, but you wouldn't know what Senator McCain has to say about this war, because he didn't want to tell the American people that he wants to keep our troops there and he wants to continue fighting this war. 